something that was put in the in the tank yesterday. We do this every day. Every 24 hours it gets collected. The mesh on the net is um, it's actually 25 microns. So anything larger than 25 microns stays inside the net and anything that's smaller will go right through. And so we've concentrated the phytoplankton over the course of the 24 hours. And the water is just coming through the Palmer seawater system um, from Arthur Harbor. And this will concentrate the sample even farther. I can actually see some things in here, along with the ice. We, we usually catch some of these little animals. And um, look some of this ice out of here. And then, I don't know if you can you see, there's a lot of particles in there. So some of those are phytoplankton, some of them are little animals that are swimming around. So the things that she's swimming around are probably copepods and amphipods. And then the phytoplankton you really can't see. I'm going to have to take it inside and put it under the microscope in order to see what we have in terms of phytoplankton cells. So now that we've collected the, the, net, the net sample, we, what we have is a concentration of the phytoplankton that are in the water. And if we had just collected the water and I put a drop on a slide, I probably wouldn't see anything because there are so few cells in the, in the water right now. So the plankton net allows us to concentrate everything that's in there. So I can actually go into this sample now and um, take some water. And you can, I don't know if you can tell, but there's actually color. Now you can see that there's actually something in the water. Whereas if we just picked up a, a bottle of water, it would be very, very clear. And so if I put this on the microscope now, I'm going to go down to where they are. I can put this on a microscope slide drops and then add a cover slip and now I can look at these under the microscope and I can see um, what is in the sample what you're looking at here and I have to focus up and down because they're in different planes even on the slide but this one here on the left is uh, Cosinodiscus oculus iridis. So um, if you imagine um, a petri dish, that what you're looking at is down on top of it. And so the walls are made out of glass. And so you're looking literally at the, the top lid. And all the brown things inside, if I focus up and down, you can see the pattern on the valve. And you can see the little brown disks. And those brown disks are actually the chloroplasts. And they look brown instead of green because even though they have chlorophyll, they have a lot of other pigments that mask the green of the chlorophyll. And you can see they're all about that same sort of brown color. This one down here is, at the bottom, is another diatom. Um, the genus is Actinocyclus. And then up in the corner on the right, this one here, is another diatom called Membraneus challengeri. And so if I, as I go through, I'll see a lot of different species. And usually every day, there's approximately, well, maybe five to ten that are, are very dominant. But in addition, I might see one cell of another ten. So between 20 and 25 different species are found in each sample.